The movie begins with scenes of a mysterious alien flying through space in a spacesuit at the speed of light towards Earth to save his planet and landing somewhere in New Mexico. After crashing, the alien takes on a human form and, while naked, sneaks onto someone's property, prompting the owner to call the police. When the police arrive, they find a man with a water hose in his mouth, responding to questions with disjointed words in broken English. At the station, the man claims he is from another world world on a mission, having just learned the language. He asks for water, and then reads a name on an officer's patch, announcing his name is Faraday. Asked who can pick him up from the station, he names Justin Falls. Meanwhile, Justin is preparing for another shift at a toxic waste disposal facility. Once a promising scientist, she now takes care of her sick father and raises a young daughter. Receiving a call from the station, she goes there, but does not recognize the man. Faraday then starts quoting her scientific work work and confesses he needs her for his mission. Puzzled but willing, she vouches for the strange man. They release him, and his first stop is a pawn shop, where he vomits a large amount of gold rings. After getting money, he buys an antique device to determine his next direction. Faraday stuffs the bills in his pockets, but fails to notice them flying away. Some guys in a passing car get out to rob him. Justin sees this and tries to help Faraday, but the robbers knock a weapon from her hands. Faraday then grabs the gun and <laughs> fires randomly, scaring the thugs. Cursing herself, Justin puts Faraday in her car, and he speaks again about their joint mission, giving coordinates for a message reception. Needing money, she agrees. Soon, they stop at a gas station, where Faraday finds water containers and joyfully immerses himself into them. He then sees a horse corral and confuses Justin by saying that on his planet, horses are predators. On the road, they stop at a cafe, where Justin tries teaching Faraday decent behavior. Eventually, labeling him autistic. Faraday then surprises her by writing a futuristic equation on a napkin taught by Thomas Newton, founder of World Enterprises. On Antea, Faraday's planet, two races exist. Newton's race, the knowers, who invent and manage, and Faraday's race, the drones, who obediently follow orders. They drive on, and Faraday reveals his world is dying, and Earth doesn't have much time left either. Tired of his seemingly delusional talk, Justin drops him off off and leaves. Faraday walks towards his destination and soon sees a huge black cloud forming a tornado. Justin, also seeing this, turns back to find Faraday when he finds himself in the eye of the storm, teleported to a forest where he meets Thomas Newton, who is also an alien from Antea. Newton has learned to create spaces only certain beings can enter. He warns Faraday to stay away as agents are hunting him. In response, Faraday reproaches the teacher because all of Antea was waiting for his return with water. But time passed, and there were fewer and fewer Antans left. They considered Newton a traitor, and even decided to erase his name from memory. But Faraday believes him. Then, Newton advises Faraday to introduce a virus into Antea, which he calls humans. And most importantly, to see everything through the eyes of a human, but not to get attached to earthly life. He sets Faraday a goal, reclaim the company taken from him, because there lies the key to salvation, but he will need Justin's help. Meanwhile, the woman tries to take shelter from the hurricane in her car. Suddenly, everything calms down, and she sees Faraday in front of the car, looking intimidating and repeating only one word, origin. Terrified, Justin drives away. Faraday sets off on foot and soon reaches the familiar cafe. The waitress recognizes him, offers water, and finds out for him that origin is a corporation in Seattle. Meanwhile, CIA agent Clay receives a dinner in invitation from his boss and foster mother Finch. He recently made a mistake resulting in a child's death, and now only success in a new case can save his job. Finch tells him about the strange tornado, which was actually a dialogue in the form of signals sent and received from space, something that last happened 40 years ago. Back then, Dr. Papel, who now lives in Alaska, was involved. Clay must go there and find out everything he can. At the same time, Faraday takes a taxi to the airport and, realizing he needs documents for the flight, steals them 
from the driver. But upon entering the terminal, he suddenly feels very ill. The radiation from the passenger and luggage scanning systems affect him. He vomits a large amount of water and loses consciousness. Justin is called by the police to pick up Faraday, who is now in her jurisdiction. She arrives to find him pleading to be taken to Seattle as the tornado was a message. She finally believes he is an alien. Faraday explains that the Origin Corporation has blueprints for a device that can save Antea. As a nuclear fusion expert, she can help him build it. Justin takes Faraday home and introduces him to her family. He is baffled by why people keep useless old people instead of disposing of them. At home, Justin's father Josiah plays his favorite jazz, which delights Faraday. Meanwhile, CIA agent Clay makes his way to Alaska and finds PayPal's house, but he is immediately struck on the head and loses consciousness. The young man comes to, tied to a chair, with his mouth taped shut. The mad old man cuts him to make sure he is human. PayPal is convinced the agent came for the film. He starts to recall Newton, whom he turned into a psychopath. Then Clay manages to free himself, but the old man grabs a rifle and, threatening the agent, suddenly shoots himself. At the same time, Faraday, sitting at a table, watches the traditional prayer in confusion, not understanding who Josiah is talking to. Josiah regrets his daughter abandoning her scientific work. Faraday cannot understand why she wastes her potential on a worthless old man. An upset Justin takes her daughter to a neighbor. Faraday stays with Josiah. He looks at the old man and then reaches out to him. Justin sees flashing lights and runs to the house, finding Josiah standing on his feet while Faraday convulses in a corner, saying they can now go to Seattle. Father and daughter rush to him and find the alien completely dehydrated. They carry him to the bathroom where he drinks greedily. Then he suddenly falls. A black substance emerges from him, rises into the air, and disappears into the ventilation. After that, Faraday fully recovers. In the morning, Josiah, for the first time in years, gets himself ready and insists his daughter take Faraday to Seattle, gifting him a suit and a hat. On the road, Faraday explains they need to infiltrate the Origin Corporation's vault and find Newton's tenth project. The woman is skeptical, so Faraday asks to stop the car, approaches a long broken oil derrick, extracts a glowing sphere from himself, and inserts it into the machine's engine. The oil derrick starts working, and the alien explains that it is quantum synthesis, which can operate for hundreds of years. He used this energy to travel to Earth. Newton's project will provide the necessary energy, restore Antea's core, and enable the recreation of water. Earth is currently on the same path, and Justin was very close to solving the mystery. Meanwhile, in Alaska, Clay finds an old projector and a film reel showing an experiment on Newton, where his face was removed. The shocked agent burns down the old psychiatrist's house. Faraday and Justin stop at a hotel for the night. The alien lies on the water in the pool, looking at the stars, and predicts Earth's imminent doom. Then, Justin sets a condition. She will help achieve the goal, but the device's blueprints must remain on Earth. Faraday agrees and informs her that they need to find Hutch. It turns out, Hutch is the dismissed brother of the Origin Corporation's manager. However, seeing Faraday's calculations on a napkin and hearing Newton's name, he refuses to have anything to do with them. Clay meets with Finch. He has traced Newton's entire path. The US government practically stripped Newton, who amassed a fortune and founded Origin of everything, replacing him with their own person while torturing the alien himself. Newton then disappeared after speaking about the project. Now, another similar entity has appeared. Finch reminds him of the case's danger, but agrees to assign him the investigation, providing him with an analyst, Elizabeth. At that moment, Hutch finally comes to Justin and Faraday. He recalls Newton's projects and tries to convey to the pair what will happen if quantum energy is used on Earth. It would mean the death of the entire energy system, the ruin of oligarchs, and the closure of power stations. Who would let them do such a thing? Clay meets Elizabeth, who intercepted the last signal. Her file states she betrayed her own family. She reminds him of the child who died because of him. Clay realizes they are a team and orders her to track down the alien from the tornado. Hutch informs them that Origin is in London, but his relationship with his sister is very poor. Faraday suggests a demonstration of his quantum prototype. Hutch arranges a private plane to London. However, during the flight, Faraday's face 
suddenly starts to melt. Hutch barely manages to calm the stewardess, who is in shock after witnessing it. They arrive and infiltrate a club where scientific proposals are being presented. Faraday listens to a young scientist's presentation, but suddenly goes to the board and writes the correct formula. When questioned by the committee, he announces he came to demonstrate quantum synthesis processes. Seeing disbelief, he takes out the sphere, and instantly, all of London's electricity cuts off and then turns back on. The next day, the news goes global. Justin asks her father to come to London with her daughter Molly. Hutch receives numerous congratulations. Faraday is outraged by Earthling's wastefulness and the fact that there is nothing about his teacher Newton on the internet, as if his life was simply erased. Hutch decides to go to his sister's estate uninvited. Elizabeth tracks them and reports to Clay, showing him Faraday's airport photo. She is sure he is an alien. She also obtained information about a Mary who was Newton's friend. Clay heads to the monastery clinic where she works. Faraday's team arrives at Hutch's sister's estate. Justin talks about the prototype that can light a city for almost a year using just a liter of water. Edie opposes, but then Faraday mentions Newton's name. Edie's son admits he has music recorded by the scientist on an old device and leads Faraday to his grandfather's study. At the same time, Clay arrives at the monastery clinic and meets Mary. Meanwhile, Edie's consultants bombard Justin with questions, making her feel unwell. During this time, Faraday receives a musical sphere and upon playing it, hears strange sounds. In the monastery, Mary recalls that Newton told her about his wife and begs Clay to protect the alien as he is a miracle. Faraday realizes that the sphere contains Newton's farewell to his wife. It is so touching that tears well up in the alien's eyes, although he does not know what they are, and he throws the sphere away. Antaeans understand each other, but do not feel. Faraday wonders how humans can live like this. Meanwhile, Clay visits Edie and reminds her that her father was a CIA front. Therefore, she will have to make a deal with Faraday, who will build the required machine. Edie finds herself having to agree. But in retaliation, she tells everyone that Justin killed her assistant in an attempt to unlock quantum energy. The young man received a lethal dose of radiation because she didn't wait for safety confirmation. However, Faraday declares that he will work only with Justin. Edie is forced to sign the agreement. Justin admits that the deceased young man was the father of her daughter, Molly. Later, Faraday recalls saying goodbye to his family, his wife, and two children, and promising to return. He urges Justin to her but she is determined to first bring her family here. Hutch and Faraday arrive at the research center, where all materials related to Newton's project are brought. Simultaneously, Clay's team sets up their laboratory, where they can monitor Faraday's work. He has become a real Steve Jobs, demanding high results from employees. Soon, his team creates a construction that will shield the device from electromagnetic fields. Immediately, all of Clay's equipment shuts down. Faraday suddenly realizes something is wrong. Newton Newton planned to obtain energy from tritium, but its decay period is too short. It seems Newton was creating nonsense. Faraday simply won't have time to save the planet. While pondering this, an elderly lady suddenly addresses him, confessing she worked with Newton. Her name is Watt, and she is ready to help Faraday. Meanwhile, Justin brings her family to London and arrives at the laboratory to organize things. Josiah suddenly starts noticing changes in himself. He foresees an accident and pulls his granddaughter Molly off the road in time. In the evening, Faraday admits he is getting nowhere. He finds more and more differences between Antea and Earth. Here, people rarely follow instructions. He leaves the house, remembering his planet and flight, and again encounters Watt. She leads him somewhere, confessing she knows he is a drone. Josiah gives his daughter the materials he saved from her work. Watt tells Faraday that Earth and Antea once collided in space, after which Earth absorbed part of Antea, but Antea also received a piece of Earth, awakening the human within some Antans. The pair heads to the laboratory, where Watt reminds him of Newton's words about the virus, humans, which drone Faraday did not hear. Therefore, his children are dying now. Angered, Faraday pushes the woman away, and she starts destroying everything around. Elizabeth, watching all of this, is puzzled, as Faraday is absolutely alone in this laboratory. Then, the alien realizes the the woman is just his imagination, suggesting what to do next. He goes to Justin because he has deciphered the project. Justin shows him her equation, where she replaced tritium with another substance. 
Friends, the continuation of the story is now before you on the screen.